Today I'm going to show you how to use a water brush pen and actually enjoy it. I'll share the pros and the cons, how to get the absolute best out of them, prevent the big mistakes you usually make, and of course how to make them last a really long time. And before we're done, I will be sharing my ultimate tip for zero waste and maximum effect. Let's get painting guys. So what is a water brush pen or an aqua pen? It's these thingies right here. They're called water brushes because they have, you know, paintbrush like tips, but they also have the barrel of the pen that's usually filled with water. Then all you need to do is press the sides of the pen or sometimes there's a little button like this one right here that says push and you press the sides and the water just comes running out through the bristles. Most of these open to the wrong side. If you're trying to unscrew your water pen to put the water in and it isn't budging, don't break it, don't push it, don't try and you know release it, just try the other way around. And you can fill the barrel three ways. You can try and tip the water over, which I do not advise. I have tried and made a big mess. You can dip this in the water, press your belly as much as you can, and then you release and it just sucks up the water. And you can also use a pipette to fill it. Okay, nice, clean, controlled, perfect. With these, you don't need a water container. The water is already in there, which makes it perfect for traveling. Just get one of these, a new watercolor set, and you're good to go. They're also much lighter and much shorter than regular brushes, which makes it even easier to store them and carry them around. But just don't get your hopes up and think that this is the perfect replacement of a regular brush. It isn't. All you have is the nylon bristles, okay, which don't last as much, don't hold as much water. Plus, there's only two kinds, round brushes and flat brushes. So yeah, not nearly as many options as for regular brushes, right? These are perfect for making big washes. Just continue to dispense the water and you get a perfect gradient, just like this. They are much cheaper than regular brushes though, so yeah, that's a big pro. They're also pretty versatile. You can use them for calligraphy. <laughs> I suck at this, yeah, but you get the picture. <laughs> You can also use them for drawing, painting, sketching, you know, you can use it with graphite. But I do think the thing they're most used for is watercolor. What is the biggest problem with using water brush pens? It's the water control, or lack of it. They just make it too darn easy to use too much water. And then before you know it, there's a big puddle of water in your painting and it's all ruined. Here's how I work around that. First, less is more, okay? If you're wondering if you should press that belly, don't. Only press it when you're absolutely sure your brush is dry, you know, when it's leaving those trails. Then press it outside your drawing, okay? Either into some leftover paper that you may have lying around or into your paper towel. Using paper works best though, because you can actually do a stroke or two to see if the color value is right, if it has too much water, you know, if you want to take out a little bit of water or add some if it isn't enough. For me, the best way to make sure you have perfect water control when using your water brush pen is to actually use it. A lot. You know, that way you get to know how much or how little you need to press the belly, how much water it usually dispenses, you know, that sort of thing. It's time for my extra tip. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I used to make. Well, I still make it if I'm not careful, just did it a couple of minutes ago, which is to contaminate my water with paint. It is such a major waste of paint and completely defeats the purpose of only carrying the water pen with you because then you need to wash the whole thing and replace the water and start all over. So you just squeeze some water out of your pan to activate your paint and then you go to release the pressure of the belly and that just sucks in the paint inside okay the paint just goes right inside the belly of your pan and now your whole water tank is contaminated and you just can't keep painting so how do you prevent this make sure to release the pressure only when you're far away from any sort of paint. We have seen how these pens work with regular watercolor, but another way to use them, and I would say a more fun way to use them, is to mix them up with watercolor pencils and watercolor pens. And if you think about it, this makes it even more portable. Couple of pencils and a water brush pen, and you're good to go anywhere to paint. Can I also just add that a water brush pen is what made me want to learn how to paint with watercolors in the first place. You know, my best friend made me a craft box filled with all sorts of goodies, you know, all sorts of supplies for all sorts of crafts. And for the most part, I had no idea what they were. But this water brush pen, this exact one, was the thing that made me the most curious. And once I found out what it was for, I just needed to learn how to paint with it. We just activate the watercolor in the drawing, just like that.
So that's easy enough, right? Or we can, for example, just bring the water out of the line I just drew and paint a little heart just like that. You can even get paint directly from the tip of a pencil and then just paint. Easy peasy guys, nothing to it. Look at that. How cute is that? How fun is this? I know this is just basic level and maybe you use these pens for something else, something a little bit more elaborate. If so, please let me know in the comments, okay? I would love to know. I am getting obsessed with these. Here's how we clean our water brush. This is also much easier than the regular brush, okay? We just clean out all the paint first and then we start pressing for some water. You see the water there? And then you just keep releasing water until your brush is completely clean, just like so. How easy was that, guys? Let me show you what to do to clean and store it to make it last longer, okay? For a deep clean, you need to essentially pull it all apart. And this is pretty contaminated, so we unscrew. See the red there? Totally contaminated. And we just drop. And you may need to do this many, many times, depending on how contaminated this is. And you just put it inside. And now for the bristles. We want to be able to clean what's inside, so just putting this in water won't work. We need to press inwards to make this part pop out. Okay, and this goes in there too. So now for this part, we can take the sponge off. Be careful about it, okay? It's really sensitive and you need it back. So we just carefully remove this. And we also drop it in the water and now you can with uh, I'm not gonna do it but you can with a clip remove this part and remove the bristles from inside here but you know I don't need them because the minute I drop this in water the water will clean this thoroughly okay now don't expect uh, when you, once you're cleaning your brushes you know either when you're changing color or when you're doing a deep clean don't expect the bristles to go back to white okay they're stained they're not going to go back to the original color but you know they won't be dirty either they won't contaminate your colors once we're happy that all of this is clean we need to leave it to dry completely this is very important moldy water brush pens are very frequent and very disgusting but if it does happen just go ahead and soak it all again with a little dishwasher or vinegar once it's completely dry always store it with a cap on okay you would be surprised at how easy it is to bend these bristles i also do not advise you storing them with water inside okay before you know it it will be filled with algae or mold so make sure to empty it before storing it so now that you know all there is to know i hope you give it a try as well and come back to tell me how it went and i'll see you soon bye bye